racing fan, this is the Monday Morning Racer, Lee Kraft, and we've caught up with Kyle Koreski, all the way from Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania, on this strutmasters.com special on drag racing TV, which streams free on Roku. Kyle, look, man, let's dive right into this thing. Everybody's under lockdown, but I see you're still dirty from work. Tell me, how is the corona implications going for you in the days we're in? Hey, what's going on, Lee? Yeah, it's it's getting hectic around here. They're starting to shut down the city, and and uh, we're trying to move forward and keep all of our guys busy. But uh, it's getting scarce out here. They're kind of uh, toilet paper's gone, and all the essentials at the uh, food stores are getting uh, scarce. But uh, you know, we're here at KPK and just trying to keep everything moving, keep everyone you know paychecks coming every week, and waiting on racing. We're counting down. We got a big calendar in the office here, and counting down the days of June 4th or 5th, whenever we, uh, NHRA is going to start back up at the Gators. Sounds good, man. Hey, keep the people at work as long as you can. I appreciate you and your folks doing that. What else have you been doing, though, beyond work without any of the other social constructs that we often enjoy, you know, going to the bar, to the sporting venue, whatever it may be? How have you been entertaining yourself lately? Uh, you know, we kind of just been focusing, honestly, just work. Uh, We've been working five, six days a week, um, trying to keep everything under control and the maintenance program up to snuff and making sure our trucks are ready. So when we do go back to work, uh, there's no hiccups. Um, you know, between me and my brother at the shop, you know, every day to, you know, whatever time at night, um, that's about it. And then working in the race shop a little bit on our personal stuff and some big truck stuff, my brother and and uh yeah just trying to keep our minds busy because once you know you sit at home like they want you to i know we probably should everyone normally is home but when we're not home you know we're at the shop and trying to keep everything flowing well man look most folks think all these pro stock drivers that they just are these jet setting rock stars and they don't really have any normal life but man you're getting your hands dirty they're they're greasy i've already seen them before we Caught the stream going on here. So, what is it that you do exactly in the family business, and what is the family business? So, uh, over here at KPK, uh, between me and my brother, you know, we run the company for my dad. Uh, my dad started back in you know 1980s. Uh, we do a little bit of everything: trucking. Uh, today, we're just doing maintenance. Uh, we did maintenance on vehicles, uh, pickup trucks, trucks. We also did some property maintenance uh, down the landscape. I mean, I threw about five, ten yards of mulch today you know, between me and my guys, and we did rock, and we did trimming, we did drywall, uh, just trying to keep everyone going and make sure our properties, we do a lot of real estate investments, um, so we have a lot of rental properties, and keep making sure all the tenants are happy, and light bulbs are changed, and, you know, whatever it is, we try to do everything in-house, um, and we have a great group of guys. I mean, I can't, I can't uh, say that enough, but we have some really good guys here, and uh, my brother's runs the show pretty much, and I'm, you know, his sidekick, and and we work good together. And and pro stock racing is uh is definitely a hobby for us. Um, that's not our business. That's not our income. But uh, hey, what I would love it to be is 100%. Um, but these guys that do it for a uh, a living are super serious, and uh, they they earn it, man. They work hard, especially the KB guys that you know we're driving for KB and Ken Black and um all the guys at the shop they're just you know rock solid they just work and, and that's their livelihood and, and they love it and they put everything into it and we appreciate that yes sir well man look we appreciate you being a blue collar type guy and having this great hobby in pro stock drag racing now moving up from the sportsman ranks gotta ask let's dive into some of this good stuff on drag racing with the nhra releasing the schedule of a Gator Nationals now going to be firing up the first weekend in June. And also some national events have been completely eliminated from the schedule. What are your thoughts on this new schedule? Were there any tracks y'all were looking forward to that's not on the schedule now? How challenging is it going to be with the original, I believe, 10 to 12 races that you all were thinking about? Uh, I definitely think it, it throws a little bit of a curveball. Uh, when we originally did the deal, we were trying to do eight to ten races, ten races, kind of being the happy medium number. Um, I was really looking forward to to Vegas. Um, I've never raced there before. Um, I've been there a few times on um, personal business. Um, 
but the track just seems to be you know beautiful and i don't think they're racing the the first vegas i'm pretty sure it's done um i didn't look too much at the schedule just because we've been busy with work um trying to keep everything going but you know i'm happy to be back at the gators that was a, one of my favorite tracks growing up watching my dad at uh, i never raced sportsman there but i'm pretty sure they might race uh I heard that they might take Atlanta sportsmen and race them at the Gators. Some, someone maybe told me. So if that happens, I think we're going to try to enter Super Comp and run our dragster as well. That sounds like a good plan. I haven't heard that about the Atlanta sportsmen. That would be a great venue for them to hop on and still have sportsmen there at the Gator Nationals, even though they wrapped up the sportsman portion there back in March. So glad y'all got a plan and looking forward to the rest of the year. But you have already stepped into that pro stock car and let that clutch out. You debuted basically at the World Door Slammer Nationals. So twofold question here. Tell me how was the driving and the car and the team and that first time out and what did you think about the event itself that West Buck Drag Illustrated put on presented by SeaTech Manufacturing? Wow, there, there was uh, so much that went on at that event. Uh, you know, one being the first time I was ever in a pro stock car. Um, I sat in a pro stock car maybe about three or four times growing up, not much, but that's the first time I actually hit the ignition switch and fired one up. Um, and, uh, you know, the first time letting out the clutch was kind of, I wouldn't say scared to, but, you know, a lot of different emotions going on, what to feel and what to expect. But between all the guys at KB, um, they kind of put me in the right direction. I, and I started out, you know, with nothing, no knowledge. So they kind of didn't let me develop any bad habits, I would say, right off the bat. So I really didn't know, you know, how to hold the clutch pedal or, or what to expect or, or whatnot. So they kind of told me, how they would do it and you know we listened to them and if they told me to you know do something i followed their you know orders as best i could but uh you know between greg and jason dave Connolly, bo butner um all the guys at kb my two uh crew guys dallas and ricky um and you know everybody they're just such a big team i mean they work together if they're not working on my car they're working on greg's car if greg's car is away they work on jason's or vice versa there's no sitting around. They just work. They're workhorses, and it's a big team. And if one guy needs help or doesn't know something, they jump in. If you have a question, you ask. Um, and they're real big on, you know, maintenance, and they go back and they tear the cars uh, apart and stuff like that. But kind of get a little off topic, but West Buck, uh, wow. I mean, that event was amazing. Um, who doesn't like a bunch of door slammers, you know, at an event? I mean, I, I like top fuel and all that stuff, but, you know, to see all the pro mod guys and my first side-by-side -side race with a, a pro stock car was Vincent Nobile. So that was super cool. Uh, we grew up together at the track, you know, uh, John Nobile, his father, and my dad, Kenny, uh, they raced pro stock for a number of years. And, you know, we hung out, got a whole bunch of trouble in the pits and, you know, just being young and stupid, but, uh, you know, he raced pro stock for a little while there, he, and he's going to come back, I think. And to race side-by-side side with, with him was great. Uh, you know, it's a picture I have sent out to get framed. So it's pretty cool. Definitely cool moments, man. I know you're going to remember for the rest of your life the World Door Slammer Nationals and debuting in a KB racing car there with uh, you stepping into it the first time. And, and you had a good showing, made some good runs, and I know you learned a lot from it. And you being able to do that, you've got to have partners, you've got to have help. So that beautiful car you had down there at Orlando, tell us who was on it, who was helping you out and making all this possible. Yeah, so, uh, you know, any kind of drag racing is never possible without funding. Um, I'm very fortunate um, that my, you know, my father kind of backs the program. Uh, we have a few, you know, little sponsors here and there, but, our main sponsor is Nitro Fish Ultimate Gear and KPK Development Corporation. And, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of who makes it possible for us. And it, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming. My dad took off a little bit from drag racing. and We built the business up. And, uh, you know, he still helps out a few guys out there. And, but uh, we're, we're pretty much, I would call it self-funding. 
Uh, well, hey, we're always looking for funding. Uh, we're, we're working with a few partners right now, trying to make some stuff happen for the year, but with everything's going on, it's a little, little scarce out there for people, you know, to physically write you a check, but we're working with some partnership deals on some products and, uh, we have a few new wraps for the car throughout the year, but the, the car was wrapped uh, by my partner. He designed the wrap at Nitro Graphics, Matt Budd. Uh, he designed it back here at our shop. We printed it here at our shop in, uh, in Marsville, Pennsylvania. And then we had uh, the guys, Ben, um, Rob Downing's buddies, uh, Ben, to do some vehicle wraps for them down in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. They installed the wrap for us. And it turned out sweet. I love it. I think a lot of people liked it. Um, the pictures don't really do justice because the orange is real fluorescent and it pops real well in person. Uh, you know, pictures and stuff, it's a little off, but it, it's, it's cool. I like it. And, uh, it's a dream. I'm just living a dream. I'm still kind of on cloud nine and we're ready to get back out there. Awesome, man. Awesome. Look, speaking of something that popped before we started this zoom cast, you showed us your helmet. Well, pull that thing back out. Let's see. Oh, yeah. that and how it looks because it is a stellar looking helmet. It's going to match the car perfectly. And give a shout out to who's helping you out with that type of work as well. Yeah, so this is our new Simpson helmet from JKR Racing Products, Jeff Kondratik. And Chucky B designed it and painted it all by hand here in Maryland. Uh, not too far. Has the Hans devices and has the eject the eject system for any tray. But I mean, the, I don't know if I get the lighting right here, but uh, it's, it's pretty badass. I mean, uh, everything he does is sweet. Um, he does all of our helmets. He's been doing my dad's stuff for 10, 15 years. He does all of our bracket car helmets. Uh, he done some stuff for Clay Milliken, Bobby Tasca. Uh, he's, he's a big drag race guy and, uh, yeah, it turned out sweet, but Simpson racing products, all carbon fiber helmet, but everything's supplied through uh, JKR, Jeff Kondratik. Uh, he's a big help to our program. And, uh, yeah, the nitro fish, there it is. There she is. But, yeah, it, it turned out sweet. We're happy. I'm excited to wear it. You can see another helmet right here in a picture behind us, uh, a fan sent in, actually. Uh, my favorite picture of me in the car for the first time. Pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're excited. Man, thank you for sharing that. You're definitely going to have one nice skull cap when you get back in the car or whenever we do show back up for racing, hopefully there at the Gator Nationals in June. Now, Kyle, look, you're a younger guy. Why are you in pro stock? Because we're in the day and time where everybody is saying, oh, pro stock is boring, and it's nothing but pro Camaro, and da-da-da-da-da. So why are you in pro stock? Uh, I mean, I think... I think pro stock has just been on, has been on my list. It's kind of been my blood. It's been, you know, in my eyes, my favorite class of NHRA. Uh, I follow it. Um, and my dad, my dad raced it for so long. I don't know. It's a, that's a tough question. I mean, I just feel that it, it's, I think it's one of the most challenging cars to drive because every run, yeah, you get to go straight, but it's, you have to just be precise on every shift point and, letting the clutch out and there's so many variables in the combination that a driver is a big part of it but you got to have the right crew guys behind it making the clutch calls and suspension calls and tires and tune-ups and there's so much more to it um you know i'm a bracket racer at heart um i raced a bunch of different cars from bracket uh you know dragsters to door cars to import cars uh with cruise motorsports some hot turbo honda civics with five speed liberties in them uh, I just get behind the pro stock wheel was the most, uh, I, I don't know the word for it, but you know, I just felt, I felt right to be in it and to do it in a Chevy Camaro is, you know, my dream. That's, that's our brand. Folks, definitely. I think they do not understand the challenging aspect. I mean, I don't understand how challenging it is, but every driver that I have talked to that drives pro stock and many of them, for example, like Alex Laughlin, he's been in a lot of other vehicles. They mention just how challenging driving pro stock is that it's the most challenging vehicle that they've been in. So, Hey, you've accepted the challenge and you're doing it with a great team though. KB racing. Talk to me. Why KB racing? How did that deal develop? What's the partnership like? What's it like having 
Jason Line and Greg Anderson, those guys at your disposal? Uh, I mean, I think that was the, the best fit for us, uh, to surround yourself with, with the champions like they are. Greg Anderson, Jason Line, world champions, Dave Connolly. I mean, Dave Connolly, we know from the bracket racing world, um, Bo Butner, world champion. Uh, you know, my dad's been friends with that group for a long time. They known him, you know, all the way back when Greg was working for Warren and uh, Ken and Judy Black, which is you know, a great family. I think that was our best choice, and I feel that we'll we'll be real competitive. And their their game plan every weekend is to go out there and win. And no matter who wins, it's not oh, let's let Greg win every weekend, or let Jason win, or Bo, or you know, Derek Kramer also has a motor, and Matt Hartford. They, they're supplying you with the best stuff that they physically can. Uh, there's no laying down. If you're racing, when I race Greg, it was, hey, he wanted to beat me and I wanted to beat him. Uh, there was no, hey, Kyle, do this, do that. No, they're, they're racing, and that's what I like about it. I mean, not saying other teams aren't like that, but I feel that those guys really, you know, give it 100% every run, and there's no, you know, there's no playing around. They're, they're there to win, and. That's kind of, you know, why we chose them. And, uh, yeah, they're great. They're just great guys. You're with a stellar team, definitely a team that's going to give you opportunity out there to win, even at your first national event, whatever national event you do show up to. Now, you have mentioned bracket racing. You've got a background in racing, obviously, with your dad and your family. But, you know, you were doing junior dragsters. And I have to ask everyone who's done juniors that's now in the pro ranks, because I did juniors when I was a kid, I have to ask, what is something that you are implementing right now as a professional drag racer that you learned when you were in a junior? Um, that's a tough. I, I learned a lot. I think the biggest thing that, you know, I learned – you know, I think general about racing, it's a big family community. Uh, surround yourself with good people. And, uh, you know, I think your career will be, you know, successful and, and a fun time doing it. Um, I learned so much. I mean, we could sit here for hours and talk about what I learned. But uh, I think, you know, respecting the other racers and re kind of respecting the car, even though as a junior dragster, you still can get hurt. And the safety was a big thing. And, I think really just respecting it. And when I went into pro stock, you know, many of conversations and sometimes arguments with my dad, you know, about respecting the car, you know, something doesn't feel right. I don't care what it is. Final round, you shut it off. There'll be another race. There's another day. Uh, and that's kind of like the junior. We raced with Joey Girdleman and he always said the same thing, you know, even though it was just a junior, Hey, if something goes wrong, you know, shut it off. It's not worth it. And uh, you know, we'll be here to support you as a family. And, and that's how, it, you know, it's been with the pro stock car. As soon as I got in the car, you know, my dad comes up to me and, you know, tell me, Hey, look, you know, do your best and whatever happens happens, but if something doesn't feel right, shut it off. We'll make more runs. We got nothing but time. And, uh, you know, I felt, I just felt safe in the car though. They, they made sure the safety stuff was right. They made sure, you know, the car was a hundred percent and, uh, you know, they said the same thing. Something doesn't feel right, shut it down and we'll move on to the next run. And, and, uh, yeah, so the junior stuff is uh, definitely a great start. I mean, it gave you, you know, run down the track. I, I, learned, I learned the track in a junior. So, you know, where the cones are, where the 60 foot, the 330, the eighth mile, the quarter mile. So I think that was probably one of the most things you learn, you know, your, your, uh, you know, your position on the track, kind of knowing where you're at. So when you go to the up, up the ranks bracket racing, when you're bracket racing, you know where the eighth mile is or, you know, when you're, you know, whatever you're doing, you just know kind of where you're at. Well, speaking about respect, you must have learned it from one of the individuals that would probably have the greatest amount of respect for a pro stock car. Your dad was involved in probably the most infamous NHRA crash ever, along with Bruce Allen. I have to ask, were you there that night? Did you see it or did you see it on TV? You know, what was your thoughts as a kid? Uh, I, I was not there. Um, as a family, we were, you know, it wasn't live at the time. So we were watching NHRA, and then we got a phone call from Eddie saying, you know, your dad was just in a bad crash. We don't know what's going on. You know, right away, you know, my mom went into panic mode, and, um, you know, my brother went into panic mode. So we were all kind of panicking. What was going on? Is he all right? 
you know, all we know is a, it was a bad crash and we don't know anything. So, uh, you know, right away, mom's looking to book tickets to go fly there. And, you know, yeah, I mean, that, that's a, that's a moment that a lot of people bring up. I mean, it was a crazy incident. Thank God they both survived Bruce Allen as well as my dad, one of my dad's real good friends. And, um, it's something that I, I don't, uh, it, it's, it's crazy. Cause we show, you know, a lot of people talk, about it. it's not something i never really like to talk about only because i don't ever want to experience anything like that but um you know all the safety gear work the cars did what they were supposed to do it could have went bad um but it didn't so we kind of moved forward from it and you know hope we never you know experience anything like that definitely hope that you don't ever experience anything like that in your career hopefully you have a long career filled with a lot of wins i hope that's in the future for you now you've mentioned growing up at the track and i have been able to ask just about everyone that i've talked to what are their thoughts on the nhra experience look my home national event is the southern nationals i've been going to that event since I was in diapers and I really feel like the experience with the NHRA has lowered over the decades. Your thoughts on the NHRA fan experience, how it is, what they could do to improve it, where do you think it is right now from what you've seen growing up and now being a participant even at the pro ranks? I, I mean I definitely think it's changed. I mean I haven't even been at my first national event as a pro stock driver if you call it but um Growing up, you definitely see there was more attendance to the races. I think, you know, with the economy was a little bit better back in the day. I know just from the nitro fish side of it, the sales was very big back in the day versus today. But we definitely see it, it going forward. What I would change, I think, I think as a fan looking out, people want to see more behind the scenes and not so much of, you know, role play and the same stuff, burnouts. They want to see the – the reality side of it and the guys I think thrashing more not just for the the, the fuel guys even though they thrash a lot uh, I give them guys a lot of respect what they do in between the rounds but you know give a little bit more TV time to the pro stock guys that are out here for a long time I feel like you know pro stock and pro stock motorcycle kind of always got cheated um, on the time I, mean, I don't want to go political on it and start talking about bad or anything like that. I mean, I think any trade tries their best. Um, but I, I always think pro stock always got, you know, the shit end of the stick, I guess, if you want to call it. And uh, same thing with pro stock motorcycle. I mean, L when LE was doing it and, you know, a lot of those guys out there, Matt Smith, and um, the Lucas oil bikes and, you know, all those guys, they, they, you know, that's what they do. They're trying to get the sponsors out there and it's hard to get sponsors when, you don't get in their advertising on, on TV. They want to see the TV time. And uh, I think they'll get it eventually. Uh, if not, hey, maybe West Buck will start a little series and we'll go a little door slam nationals all year. I don't know. But uh, only time will tell. Wes, we just need you to create a series. Get it done, man. Get it done. And bring yeah. everybody else in, bikes and all. Be the oh, Drag yeah. Illustrated circus of drag racing that would be uh, spectacular uh, now yeah, he put on a great show there oh the world board summer nationals man yes it definitely was great was great look let me ask this since that comes back up you know west buck had the party and everything for folks on friday night what moment was the greatest outside of the pro stock car there at the world door slammer nationals uh it, it was my first time meeting the team uh the kb team so hanging out with the guys and, and Cody and uh, Chris from Derek Kramer's crew. And I, I met a lot of people that I never, you know, I'm somewhat shy when I, when I talk to people and I first get to meet them. Once I meet them, I kind of open up a little bit, but I kind of stick to myself. Um, as much as people think I'm wide open, uh, I, you know, with the race and stuff, I, I really take it serious. Um, and, you know, my favorite part probably was the party. I mean, they had great killer food. Uh, Rob Downing before we went testing like man I need you to lose another 10 pounds I didn't eat for like a week and uh, we went to that party and we had some good food and Wes you know was talking and all the pro stock guys and pro mod guys were there and it was cool to see everyone just get along and you know kind of like a I would say like a big family door slammer family I guess and uh, it was sweet there was some top fuel guys there Clay Millick and my one of my all-time favorites was there uh, I call him the crazy uncle um, 
he's uh, he was there supporting you know his door car buddies and myself, which was great. Him and his wife. Um, it was all around just cool, man. It was a great experience, and I was just living the dream that you know a lot of people you know would like to do. And I'm fortunate enough that I'm able to live it. And right now, I'm just going to live it. I'm going to take it all in as much as I can and meet as many people as I can. And meeting, you know, it's the first time I met Wes Buck. And, you know, shaking his hand and, you know, thanking him for putting on the event. And he was thanking me. I mean, I don't know why he was thanking me, but he was thanking me for coming. So that was cool. You know, same thing when we go to the bracket races, a lot of these promoters, some of them don't thank you. But when you go to some of the, the real, you know, bracket cars, the, you know, big money races, they're thanking you. I mean, that's cool. I, I like that because they're hard out here working. And, you know, we're back at home working hard to come out here and support them so they Everyone just supports each other. Well, from promoter to racer to fan, it's really a big team, even though people might not realize it. you got to have everybody doing their part for a show to go on and to be a success. And the World Door Slammer Nationals was awesome. I know you and I know myself. We're looking forward to World Door Slammer Nationals, too. We're all oh, looking yeah. forward to that. Now, back to the fan experience thing just a bit. You know, myself, I'm at 31 years of age. I believe you're around 30 or 29 years of age. I've got to ask, for us younger guys, now we're both in it, what do you think it's going to take to get younger fans into the sport, to show up at a national event, to, well, look at pro stock, as complicated as it can be, and understand that these are challenging cars to drive. What do you think it's going to take to get new fans to come in? Um, I, I think, you know, to, to draw more people to the, to, into the stands, I mean, I think it's a little bit of the money issue. Um, you know, a lot of family of five don't have, you know, I don't know what exactly it is, but 85, maybe you could correct me on it, 85, a hundred dollars for the weekend pass. I don't, I don't recall what it is. Like I said, I haven't been in a national event in a while, but I think it's, you know, it's expensive for the family to come out, but for somebody of my age, not knowing anything about pro stock they need to know more about it um they don't know anything about it all they think of is it's a chevy camaro and that's what everybody runs and it's naturally aspirated on fuel injection that's it uh they don't know anything about the clutches and the transmissions and you know different stuff about why they change tires and why they put taller or smaller tires on the average person doesn't know that you know rpms and trying to go through with the at the traps at the perfect rpm I think that's what they need. They need a little bit more background on it and uh, a little bit more excitement. So, in essence, you're saying that people need more information on what goes behind the scenes and not just from NHRA. They need it from Drag Racing TV. They need it from Monday Morning Racer. They need it out on Facebook and YouTube. Use the tools that are available to get all this behind the scenes information. Is that what you're saying? Oh, 100 percent. Drag Racing TV, Monday Morning Racer. I mean, I follow you guys both of the channels, and I love watching that stuff. I mean, that's that's what I want to see the following day, not like a scripted show. I want to see just more of the reality side of it. And what are the guys doing at the shop? I mean, that's uh, you know, when I went to KB shop, I was happy to get poured and poured seat and all that stuff. I was more excited on let's see the CNC machines. Let's see where you build the engines. Look at a chassis shop. Like, that's the stuff I want to see. I mean, I want to see the guy welding and, and, you know, doing whatever. I mean, that's what I want to see. I mean, the cars are cool, and, and that's all great and all. But I think the people want to see more what it takes to go into a, a pro stock team, not just, you know, they think everyone just shows up and they have all this money and they just buy every, all the parts. But just the thinking and the, the R&D behind it, you know, all the way down to, you know, suspension of the car and setup is huge. People don't understand what that is. I didn't understand, to be honest. Uh, you know, when my dad raced, they didn't have all that technology. They were just starting to kind of switch over, but we did it on a uh, very low budget, I would call. So, um, you know, we didn't have the technology. My dad, did, when my dad came home, went to work. He didn't go home to the race shop and try to find another three, four horsepower. And that's what it takes. You, you know, you're down three, four, five horsepower. You're losing races. Uh, and people don't know that. They think, oh, you know, they all got the same motor and that's it. No, there's a lot more to it. And I've learned a lot um, with what really goes into these cars. And 
you know, the credit that I used to give the guys, I give them a lot more. So Kyle, look, drag racing has great moments. For me as a kid, I didn't have my dad in modern day of drag racing to look up to and look and see great moments that he was able to accomplish. You know, I count great moments with individuals like Bob Glidden or Don Garlett or John Force, but your dad was racing, Captain Chaos. For you as a son, though, what was a moment looking up to dad and going, wow, that was awesome. That was cool. That's my dad. What was that moment? Um, I think uh, it's like, wow, like, what do you say? Like Captain Chaos. I mean, the guy is complete chaos. Uh, and that's the truth. Uh, when he's here at home or at the track, he's just nuts. He's always thinking about different stuff. But my greatest, uh, you know, what I thought the best was, was probably Indy. He went some rounds at Indy, uh, went to the finals at Indy. I mean, Indy's probably the biggest race. That's on my bucket list to win. I know you're wearing the old hat there, uh, I'm pretty sure. But uh, Indy's it, and he, he almost did it. And that would have been his first career uh, NHRA win um, as a driver. And, you know, I look up to him every day, though. I mean, the guys the hard worker he started with a lawnmower and just built an empire it's really unbelievable and uh you know he built it to a certain to a certain height and then my brother took over and kind of took it to the you know the very next level which where we're at now but he's just all about hard work um you he plays hard don't get me wrong he plays more than anybody i know but he earned it and uh you know he's 60 today's his birthday actually shoot Today's his birthday. Captain Chaos's birthday is today, March 30th. I want to wish you a happy birthday, Dad. If you're, uh, you'll watch this, I'm sure. But uh, he's K. I, I look up to him. There's no certain real moment in racing. It's probably Indy, but in life in general, I look up to him every day. He, he, he's, my, he's my number one guy. Captain Chaos, happy birthday. Now, Kyle. You have been in junior dragsters. You've been through, you mentioned imports and some other classes, and now you're stepping into pro stock. So, look, give me the rundown. What has been your highlights in juniors, imports, some of the other classes, and what do you think will be the highlights toward the end of your career in pro stock? What do you think, what do you hope will be the accomplishments? Uh, my accomplishment going into this whole thing, honestly, uh, before knowing uh, the door slammers race was kind of, an option for us was Gator Nationals was our first national event. I was going in um, myself as, all right, just, you know, focus and just try to qualify. You know, when we, when we were racing, my dad was racing, qualifying was like a win to us. If we qualify, we're, you know, bottom half of the field, sometimes top half of the field, but qualifying to in pro stock is a huge accomplishment in my eyes. Um, you know, it could be from number, you know, one qualifier, number 16 qualifier. It could be, you know, four or 5,000. It's so tight. It's such a tight field. Um, so going to the Gator Nationals was just to qualify. Then we went to Orlando. We got our license. And, uh, you know, we qualified well. I felt comfortable. And uh, I, I, my ex expectations now, man, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to stay as humble as I can. Um, I still want to just qualify for every single race. I think that'd be a huge accomplishment. And I want to get my first national event win. Uh, that's, that's on my bucket list this year, a hundred percent this year. And, you know, I want to give that to my dad. I think, uh, he's earned it. And I think, you know, we'll earn it as a team and, uh, I'm super confident about it. Uh, as long as I can do my job and, uh, stay relaxed and stay focused in the car, I think we have a, you know, KB's giving us a real good shot. Well, uh, yes, I agree. KB Racing's definitely going to give you a good shot. You are absolutely right, though, man. Just making the field right now in Pro Stock is a huge deal. Pomona, 20 cars. Phoenix, 19 cars. The entry list was high for the Gator Nationals. Probably, possibly even more now with the rescheduling and people shuffling things around. So just making the field is a win, it seems like, in and of itself. Speaking of the Pro Stock field, right now in Pro Stock, who is the toughest competitor and why? Um, I mean, not, not racing really a national event yet. Um, in my eyes, I think uh, 
Man, not even, you know, as the main guy, K, one of the main guys at KB, Greg Anderson, I think he's he's bad, man. He's he's serious. <laughs> and, you know, he gives you that look like he wants to cut your head off. And I think between him, him or Jay Coughlin Jr., um, he's been, you know, one of my, one of the guys I've been looking up to for a long time as a kid racing. His accomplishments are unbelievable as a pro driver and as a sportsman. I mean, he's still a sportsman racer in my eyes and he loves bracket racing as well i think them too uh there's a lot i mean there's a lot of good people out there but you know they would be my two top picks that you know if if i was to race anybody in the finals and i beat them or any round in general i'd feel super accomplished to uh beat one of those two those are some great names to throw out i mean jeggy you know, though the nickname doesn't get thrown around a lot, I mean, folks call him the natural out there in the drag racing world. So when you get named like that, you know you're good. And, yeah, Greg, I mean, everybody talks about his work ethic. At, like, at the shop, he is this very intense person that just works, 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 works. Did you see that in person when you were at the shop? Oh, yeah. Yes, that was the first time. That was the first time I, um, I seen Greg in a long time. Uh, like physically, you know, handshake and talk to him. Um, I went there, I was there, I went there on a Saturday morning. We flew out Philadelphia, like 5 a.m. We got to Charlotte at like, I don't know, whatever it was, 8 a.m. I was at the shop by nine o'clock. He was already there. Uh, the shop was, you know, about three or four or five guys were working in the shop. I talked to Greg probably out of five hours I was there. I talked to Greg for about three and a half minutes. <laughs> and that's the first time ever going to the shop. I was sitting in, you know, their race cars and getting fitted and sat in his race car. And he was just working. He didn't stop. He didn't stop working. I mean, none of the KB guys did. I mean, they were just wrenching. And I love that. I mean, that's that's cool. I want to be involved as much as I can. They have a routine. Um, those guys have a routine. They have a certain job. And that's what, you know, they, they strive to do perfect. But Greg was nonstop. He's uh when we were at Orlando, I thought I was in a bracket race on Wednesday and Thursday. He made, I, I'm going to say, I don't know, don't quote me on it. He made like nine runs the one day. And I was like, did the guy ever work on the car? He was so quick, you didn't even see him working on it. He was making runs, and he was just turning that car around crazy. And his crew chief and his guys, and, you know, they're, they're, Greg's an animal. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I give him that. He's a hardworking guy, and no one, I don't think anyone can take that from him. The man definitely works his tail off, and I think he's legendary status in testing. Saw some footage of him once. He almost makes a full pass. The car didn't do what he wants it to. He stops, and he backs up the whole entire drag strip back to the pit, and they fix whatever they need to go make another test run. It's absolutely insane. Oh, uh, yeah, that's sweet. Kyle, I'm dying to ask. Look. Your dad had that moniker of Captain Chaos, and here you are now. You've been dubbed Kid Chaos. Look, man, can you live up to it? Uh, I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He, there's only one captain, and there's only one captain of Chaos, and that's Kenny Goretzky. And, uh, you know, they named me Kid Chaos. Do I have some chaos? Yeah. I'm going to try to stay, you know, under the radar as much as I can. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's cool to be called that. Uh, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> That's a tough, tough one for me. All right, man, you got some big shoes to feel. In fact, speaking of feeling some big shoes with your dad, your dad's done something that no one else has done, apparently. I found this earlier today. So in 1990, at Phoenix, he's the only guy to qualify for top fuel and pro stock. Yeah. Fascinating. I got to ask, do you hope that your career will fan out a bit? Like do pro stock, maybe step into another class. Let me put a bug in your ear. Like no one's ever done what I like to affectionately call the triple in funny car, pro stock and top fuel. Yeah. Uh, that'd be great. I mean, maybe if I win the Powerball or something of that nature, uh, three, $400 million, then maybe we'll think about that. But, Hey, hey, I'm open for anything. I, I want to drive. I'll race the golf carts. If they tell me to race the golf cart, I'll race the golf cart. Um, but, no, we, we, we talked about some other classes, but we want to focus on the pro stock car. We're going to try to race some sportsman stuff at the national events. Um, you know, a few of them, we don't know which ones yet, but we'll kind of 
you know, wing that as it comes. But uh, my, I wouldn't say goal for this year, but I would like to race a little bit of pro mod. Um, that's always been my second favorite class. Um, my dad would love to see me in a top fuel or a funny car. I don't think mom's going to let me do that, but if he wants me to do it, I'll do it. Um, I'm not ready for that yet, but we're going to focus on pro stock for this moment. And then I think the next class, if we do anything in the pro ranks, would be pro mod. Pro mod is a stellar, wicked class. And with you mentioning pro mod, let's do a little dreaming here. Tell me, what would that car be? Would it be like a modern Camaro, nitrous, turbo, or would it be some old classic, you know, really, you know, thinned out, mid-aerodynamic? What's the dream nitro fish kid chaos pro mod? Oh, man. I, honestly, I would probably like to build some kind of like a an import style. Um, import style and uh, bring a little bit of import into the drag race side. And I, I'm a turbo guy. I've never been a nitrous fan. Um, a lot of buddies of mine do the nitrous stuff. But, you know, with the Honda turbo stuff, there's nothing like 40, 50 pounds of boost coming in on the top end. That thing just pulling. Um, I think that's what we would probably do. Some kind of turbo car. Maybe do some – some nitrous stuff. Uh, I think a good team for me, which, you know, just to bring back some old memories would be with uh, Ricky Smith, Tricky Ricky. Uh, he's been one of my favorites. You know, my dad, he drove for my dad back in the day uh, with some pro mod stuff with Eddie Granacci and, and uh, you know, Eddie raised pro mod with a 63 split window. I thought that would be a cool car, but you know, a lot of these cars are getting so slick now. Um, it's hard to take an old school. I mean, Hey, I'd like a 69 Camaro. But it's not really, you know, suitable, you know, for that kind of class. You kind of need to be a two chassis car. But I think some kind of import would be my pick. Some kind of import in the pro mod ranks. That sounds pretty cool, man. That would definitely be different. It would be unique, maybe even trend setting in those ranks. Hopefully you get to fulfill that before long in your drag racing career as well. Kyle, look, man, it's been great talking with you for Drag Racing TV brought to us by strutmasters.com. I'm going to give you the last few words. And as I've been asking everyone, give me those last few words for why people should be a fan of Kid Chaos. Also, what a word to your partners and to your competitors, why they should look out for the kid. Uh, we're here. We're here to stay. Uh, I'm going to try to, do the best I can and hopefully we're going to have some new gear coming out and bring out some new stuff for the younger generation uh, all the way down to the toddlers with some new gear from Nitro Fish and uh, my competitors hey I'm going to stay humble on that side and uh, we're going to give it we're going to give it 110 percent. Drag racing fan for Kyle Koretsky I'm Lee Kraft the Monday morning racer this has all been brought to you by strutmasters.com for Drag Racing TV, which streams free, always on Roku. Drag Racing fan, until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.